Hi, I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Charlene, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm King. I'm an instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been a chef for over 20 years. I've never made dumplings before. I did tell my grandma that I'm here. I'm a little nervous because she will watch this video and judge me very harshly. My grandma's a pretty good cook. Dumplings were always there throughout pretty much all of my childhood. My first time making dumplings is probably when I was like four or five. There is, really isn't a recipe. Um, this is from experimentation and it really comes out a little bit different every time. Well, I've been making dumplings for a long time. If it was a perfect world, I would have soupy dumplings every day. <laughs> but we're not in a perfect world. So today, super excited to be making dumplings. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dumpling wrapper. This is AP flour, all-purpose flour. Use bread flour, and also this makes it harder for the dough to break when you're boiling it. So add a pinch of salt, and then I add this room temperature water. Hot water in here. The hot water is just gonna kind of help work that gluten in there, get that dough kind of soft. So I like to use my fingers like this to fold the flour in to incorporate everything. So I realized that also a stand mixer might be easier. <laughs> for something like this. You know, if you're gonna make a large batch of this, you could use a mixer, but I'm a chef and I like to do things with my hands. To make it really easy, um, I bought this pre-made dough. It's, it's uh, essentially dumpling wrappers. I guess I will continue. <laughs> and we're also gonna add fat to this. Vegetable oil will help give this dough some nice elasticity. In order for not to dry out, you put a towel over it. Put our little dough ball baby to sleep. I'm gonna let our little dough ball rest for 45 minutes, covered with a damp towel. So this is a dumpling wrapper. It's essentially what you'd expect. It's dough that um, flour-based that has been flattened, pressed, and then usually refrigerated. Really easy to work with. If you buy it frozen, you could just let it to frost before you're ready to work with them. So now this has been sitting for about 15 minutes, and I'm ready to check on it. Hello. It's loosened up a little bit now, so it's easier for knead and knead. But you'll know you're ready when the surface of the dough is relatively smooth, like a baby's butt, basically. So now this sits for an hour, so in order for it not to dry, I use a wet towel. All right, so we've let our dough rest for about 45 minutes at room temp. Um, I want to form it into a large donut, and the goal here is to just have it even all around. Sprinkle a little bit of flour. flour. Now we're gonna cut our guy in half. I'm gonna leave this guy here on the side. Right now we're looking pretty good. In today's day and age, when time is money, I think it's perfectly fine. It's not too much work for me. I really like to cook, so. We're gonna cut our log in half. We're gonna cut these in half again. It's just a process of cutting and then punching down and then eventually rolling out. We want it to be a lot thinner on the outside and a little bit thicker right here in the middle. So this is what the wrapper is gonna look like for a dumpling. So I'm gonna cover these with a wet paper towel to keep them nice and moist and next onto my filling. So first up, let me take care of these green onions. And then I'm gonna just do a very fine chop. Garlic, okay, I'm just gonna work this through. I am going to play with some ginger. I love ginger. I just like using a spoon. I find it a little more gentler than using a, a peeler. Just gonna peel it. We just wanna microplane our ginger. And I'm just gonna tap it, snowing ginger. So the cabbage I'm using is Napa, Napa cabbage. cabbage. It has a lot of um, like juice in it, if that makes sense. If your cabbage is really wet, you can dry it out with a paper towel. But for here, we're using salt to coax the water out of this vegetable. So now that it's in this bowl, I add the salt. Give it a mix. I just let it sit for 15 minutes. And this is a great time to assemble the rest of the filling. I have some ground pork here. You can use ground pork, but I like to use hand minced pork. The shrimp, since the meat is also minced, you kind of want it to be in a similar consistency. We're gonna slice our chive. Salt, sugar. Another key ingredient is the shiitake mushrooms. No oil, sesame, sesame oil. oil. Soy sauce. If you're concerned about salt, you can go low sodium. I am not. Now we're gonna mix everything together. Our filling's done. We're gonna make our stock. This is a nice pig's foot. Say hi to the pig's foot. You could throw this in there, 
but you're gonna miss all that beautiful collagen that's in the middle of this. Collagen is really important because as we cook that collagen out, it makes our stock gelatinous. So you're gonna have to chop them up. There we go. That's what we want for a stock. And then one egg, but I'm gonna beat the egg before I put it in um, the mixture. Cooking one. Chicken feet. These we don't have to hack up. Chicken back. So now we're gonna we're gonna work with our aromatics that go into our stock. Ginger. Let's do our garlic, whole black peppercorns, and salt. Water. We're gonna bring it up to a boil, and then we're gonna lower it down to a simmer and let it simmer for four hours. And now I'm just gonna mix it all up. Some people like to use their hands. I don't. I'm mixing this with my hands. This is something I do. Some people think it's gross. This is another arm workout. Dumplings are just, are just, it's just such good soul food, really. So now what I do is I squeeze excess liquid out of this Napa cabbage, and I just mix until I'm incorporated. Here's our stock. I threw it in the fridge a couple of hours, and I mean, you're talking about gelatinous, like, that's, the stock's not going anywhere. So we're just gonna do a nice simple cross hatch, just all the way across. This is gonna be the start of a beautiful soupy dumpling. That's our gelatinized soup, ready for our soupy dumplings. And you see how easy it was? Bunch of ingredients, chop them up, throw it in a bowl, mix it up. Now I'm gonna make our sauce for our dumplings. Which is arguably kind of the most important part of the flavor. This is probably what grandma would make, maybe a little dumbed down. So I'm making kind of a citron style sauce. This is where my family's from. Um, it's not the most traditional sauce for dumplings. In the north, you usually dip them um, and vinegar and then maybe a little bit of ginger. Back to our ginger. We're gonna peel this. We're gonna julienne this. Got our chives, the rice wine vinegar. Gonna finely slice up one scallion. The base of this sauce are these two things, which are homemade. So this one, this first one is, um, this is called fu zhi yo, which means sweet soy sauce. sauce. Love how that comes together, look at that. And we're going to mix. And then this one is chili oil, which is where all the spice comes from. For the sauce, it's just putting things together. Water. Chili oil. Sesame, sesame oil, oil. Vinegar. Peppercorn oil. Sugar, because it sweetens it up. Add salt. And then our scallions. But I'm using two cloves here, so I really like the flavor of garlic. And I think it balances well with some of the sweeter soy sauce flavors here. And just mix it all up. And then just a little taste. I'm gonna use my pinky. Mmm. And that's it. That's our sauce for our soup dumpling. This is by far the most fun part. Well, not the most fun part. The eating is the most fun part. This might be one of the most intimidating parts of the process. These are the beautiful balls we made earlier. A little flour to start us off. Just basically push down on it so we have like a flat little pancake. Now we're gonna roll out. It's kind of like origami arts and crafts. There's no one right or wrong way to do it. Basically every member of my family does it differently. This is our uh, filling we made earlier, our pork filling. I'm gonna take some of this. That's our uh, nice gelatinous broth. And I'm gonna fold it into our filling. I like to fill mine to the brim. I like to be pretty aggressive with how much I put in. Kind of want to understuff your dumpling. You don't want to overstuff it. You want to use your judgment. You still want to have that perimeter outside. And now here comes the fun part. We're gonna start folding it, pinching it. It's like a nice little purse. And then what we're gonna do is just twist it at the end. Make a pinch, make another pinch, make another pinch. Start from the other side, and then make pinches to go towards the middle again. And then seal the middle together. And because this, this is like homemade dough, I don't need water to seal anything. I'm gonna moisten the edges of the wrapper with some water. I'm gonna crimp the middle, and then work through to seal the edges. The biggest thing is you just want it to close. Chinese culture, good luck is uh, eight or 18. So they say at least uh, at least 18 crimps. I never really follow that rule though. <laughs> Look, you could just you can just lay on that like a pillow. Like that's adorable. And now you have a nice little dumpling. Now we're gonna cook our dumplings. So we have a uh, wok here with water, a steam basket. We want to line that bamboo though. You don't want to put it straight on the bamboo because if we put that straight on the bamboo, that dough will, uh, as we steam it, will get sticky. So I decided to boil mine. This is the most traditional way in my family to do it. In my opinion, you have a, like a more of a pure um, dumpling flavor. 
instead of searing it, you get um, a lot of the oil. About a tablespoon. I'm looking for a nice, good sizzle when I drop these bad boys in. We are not there yet. So we have our, our bamboo basket lined, and now I'm gonna fill it with our dumplings. And I don't wanna overcrowd the pan. And once this water starts boiling again, I'll add a little bit to this um, water to bring the temperature down. The reason why I do that is because then outside layer of the filling doesn't overcook before the inside cooks. Just take a little peek, ooh, yep. These bottoms are getting nice and golden brown. We have raw pork here. We want to make sure that it's cooked fully through. I like to leave it in there between eight, like eight to 10 minutes. Kind of like a moist mini oven, natural oven. We're just going to add in a quarter cup of water. Turn down the flame, cover, and I'm just going to let these steam. Um, really about three to five minutes. Steaming in the bamboo basket imparts that flavor of the bamboo. It's steaming, the meat's cooking, everything's looking right, you know. Knock on wood, but uh, I think I knocked this one out the park. Since they're fresh, they're not frozen, um, they are ready really fast. Dumplings are ready. So now to plate these. So here I have my dumplings, I have some scallions, some cilantro, and also my previously made dumpling sauce. Wow, they're really sticking to the bottom here. No wonder they're called butt stickers. There we go. Even after so many years, chopsticks are still sometimes a struggle. Some, you know, got a little beat up. Oops. Dipping sauce. Oh my god, it's so pretty! I am feeling great, because now it's time for the best part. And here are my dumplings. And here are my minced pork and shrimp and Napa cabbage dumplings. And these are my soupy dumplings. This is the fun part. This is what we've all been waiting for. At least, as, well, this is what I've been waiting for. Now we get to eat it. All right, Our here goes. There, right? Mm. That's really good. Great. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's a soupy dumpling. They taste like I remember. It tastes like my childhood. It tastes like home. I would definitely serve this to my grandma. I think she'd be very proud. My favorite part of this dumpling is knowing how, much hour, how many hours I put into it. It's all worth it at the very end. Now that I'm in New York, whenever I miss home, I like to make this. It came out really nice. Uh, nothing exploded. All the pockets held up tight. The pork has the right amount of fat. The sauce is great. I, it's great. It's a winner. Dumplings are a delicious package of expertly balanced salty, sweet, and acidic flavors. Let's see how each of our chefs made theirs. John used a store-bought wonton wrapper that was already shaped and sized to accommodate his filling. These wrappers are versatile, convenient, and made essentially with flour and water. They do have some additional ingredients that act as preservatives like sodium propionate and sodium benzoate, along with salt and citric acid. They may also contain L-cysteine, which is an essential amino acid that's required for gluten formation and acts as a dough conditioner, which is one of the structural components in dumpling wrappers. They also help to make the dough pliable and really easy to work with. When time is money, I think it's perfectly fine. Charlene made her own dumpling skin by blending bread flour, which has a higher percentage of gluten proteins, glutenin and gliadin, with just under 50% water by weight and a pinch of salt. It's not too much work for me. I really like to cook, so. This flour to water ratio ensures that the gluten proteins will be completely hydrated and pliable enough to fill and crimp. Charlene also took time to rest her dough, which allows for complete starch and protein hydration and for the proteins to relax, making the dough nice and supple. King made his dumpling skins out of a lower protein all-purpose flour. As the name indicated, all-purpose flour is milled and processed with a broad range of functionality in mind. He had a lower flour to water ratio, but used hot water, which caused the starch molecules to begin to gelatinize. Which is what we want. The addition of a small amount of oil adds richness, but also coats the flour, preventing complete starch gelatinization and yielding a very tender, slightly glossy dough. 
John's filling is simple, clean, and expresses traditional Asian flavors by blending garlic, ginger, scallions, soy sauce, and sesame oil with ground pork and Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage is a cruciferous vegetable that has an oblong shape with tightly packed, slightly bumpy leaves. It has a mild flavor. Grandma would use Chinese cabbage. The way cabbage is prepared has an effect on the taste. John chopped his Napa cabbage, which has been found to liberate flavor compounds like the isothiocyanates from their precursor molecules, increasing the prominence of a nice cabbage flavor. Charlene used a shrimp and pork combination, along with rehydrated shiitake mushrooms, which add an earthy, woody, meaty flavor from the glutamic acid present. She also added sesame, sesame oil, oil, which has a distinctive nutty flavor. Charlene salted her Napa cabbage, which draws out much of the water through osmosis. This removes water from the mixture. Too much water dilutes flavors and it creates excess steam and makes for a very soggy filling. King made a pork filling from shoulder meat. It's slightly darker than the pork loin because it's almost twice as high in iron content. He also added garlic and ginger. Play with some ginger. I love ginger. Cooked together, garlic and ginger have a wonderful aroma. John made a sauce that enhances his filling with familiar Asian flavors. It's a blend of flavorful liquids in which the sugar will dissolve, balancing the salty, acidic, and umami notes. This is probably what grandma would make, maybe a little dumbed down. Charlene increased the complexity of her sauce with the addition of sweet soy sauce. It's called fu zhi jiang yu, which means sweet soy, soy sauce. sauce. Which is usually slightly more viscous, darker, and sweeter than regular soy sauce because it has fermented palm rock sugar added. She also included black vinegar. Most commercially processed vinegars are standardized at 5% acetic acid. Some wine vinegars have a slightly higher percentage. Black Chinese vinegars may only have 2% acetic acid, so it's not nearly as tart as vinegar you may have in your cupboard. She contrasted chili oil, which gets its heat from capsaicinoids in the chili-infused oil. On the other hand, the peppercorn oil gets its heat from hydroxyl alpha sanchul, which is associated with Szechuan peppers, from which the peppercorn oil is made. Szechuan peppers are spicy, fruity, citrusy, and slightly numbing. King kept his sauce simple because he made a gelatinous soup as an ingredient for his dumplings. His sauce is soy, rice vinegar, which is less acidic and has some sweetness to it ginger, and sliced chives for a slight grassy green note, which adds some color to his dark sauce. King's soup includes chicken feed and backs, and pig's feet, they're high in insoluble protein collagen. As it's heated, collagen is hydrolyzed and transforms into the soft, water-soluble protein gelatin, which takes the form of a solid when it's cooled. It adds viscosity and a thicker mouthfeel to a soup or a sauce. All three of our chefs assembled their dumplings into round dumpling skins and stuffed them with uncooked filling. John sealed his dumplings with water, stressing the importance of a good seal. The biggest thing is you just want it to close. Charlene used a rolling cut to make the dough mass into individual dumpling discs. She added a dusting of flour prior to filling to act as a thickening agent for any excessive moisture in the filling. King used a small, thin rolling pin to make his discs. <laughs> You're just rolling away. He added some of the filling along with the gelatinous soup and pleated and pinched the edges close. Pleating the edges not only makes for a beautiful dumpling, but it's functional as well because it's an excellent way to seal the edges. It's like a, a nice little purse. All three chefs used different cooking methods for their dumplings. John sauteed the bottom of his dumplings to add color and a crunchy texture. He then adds water and covers his pan, causing his dumplings to steam. Charlene simmered her dumplings in water just below the boiling point. This is the most traditional way in my family to do it. Boiling happens at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Each time the water boiled, Charlene added a small amount of cold water, which kept the temperature consistently just below boiling. 
By reducing the boiling action, the water's less turbulent and thereby less likely to cause the dumplings to burst open. King used a traditional bamboo steamer. Bamboo steamers are interlocking flat baskets that are stackable with a cover on top. This is a gentle way to cook the dumplings, minimizing the potential for them to burst. Steaming in the bamboo basket imparts that flavor of the bamboo. King lined his steamer with Napa cabbage leaves that turn a bright, beautiful green color when they're initially heated. The green pigment called chlorophyll in the cabbage loses molecular water and expresses the green color very clearly and brightly. It's a beautiful way to serve these tender and delicious dumplings. Found in many world cuisines, dumplings may be prepared using a wide variety of methods, such as sauteing, simmering, or steaming. We hope you'll take inspiration from our chefs the next time you want to dip into dumplings.